well, we made it to Ballyhome Bay and <laughs> after the events of getting out yesterday. Um, it got too dark to film. We came in here in pitch blackness and we dropped the anchor in total darkness, but it all seemed to go all right. But today we have to take the boat back into Bangor because she's been lifted out to have her bottom cleaned and her anode changed. So we best get a shimmy on because I think we're running a wee bit late, to be honest. What? I'm going to give you good quality gloves. Okay. Okay. Good quality. Thank you. Covers. Going to start the engine in a second. Way. Uh, do you want the sail prepared? Because quite frankly, you're not going to sail. I think we can manage without it. What do you reckon? Are you happy enough without it? I'm happy enough without it. I probably will take the um, Americans back. It'll make manoeuvring the anchor easier. Because uh, also, if you do need to deploy the Jenica, yeah, we can do. We okay. can do, but we're not going to deploy the main. Okay. So just get the um, furling line done. Well done. We have her in the slings, as you can see. Um, the copper coat's doing a really good job. She's got a bit of slime on her, but no barnacles, no weed or anything like that. To be honest, if it wasn't for the fact we need to change the anode, I probably wouldn't have her lifted. I'd probably just let her stay like this. I'm very, very pleased with the state of the anti file and the state of the bottom of the boat. So that's good. Um, but I just need to get this anode changed and get the propeller bearings all greased up. Oh, good Iggy. So what's happening, Bevy? Uh, well, we're back in Bangor Marina because <laughs> the weather outside is truly awful. We could have said in the anchorage, it's gusting for it, things like that. But, you know, we've got a marina like a quarter of a mile away. So we can either sit in the anchorage being bounced around or we can come in. If we were out in the wilds and there was no marina near us, we'd just bottom it out. We'd try and find somewhere as sheltered as we could get in the anchorage. 
but it seems foolish when there's a marina right beside you not to go in just to sit the storm out. So we're in anyway and while we're here we're going to do another couple of jobs. Now one of the jobs we're going to do is our door up there has a crack in it. Um, it's a Perspex door, it's 20 years old, like a lot of it's a 20 year old boat. And um, what we've decided to do is fit saloon doors, but that's going to take a lot of time and effort and we want to get off sailing. So in the short term for this season, we're just going to make a couple of temporary washboards and drop them into place. So we've bought some aluminium channel and we need to fit it to the door. But to fit it to the door, the bottom of the door has a slight curve on it. So what I've done, is I have on each side of the door measured the little curve that the aluminium channel is going to have to work its way around and I did this by making a, a little tool where I move that point around and as I move the point around and the rest of it there's a little hole up here to put a pencil through and it traces the curve out on well on this in this case and but the upshot of that is I can transfer the curve from the fiberglass onto the cardboard and then I can put this against my aluminium channel and I can cut the channel out so that it fits perfectly up there. I will also be using more cardboard from Serial Packet as always and uh, that will be used to actually construct the washboards. It's a tip I picked up from watching a woodworking channel. They used um, like a very fine ply board and some hot glue. I'm using a cornflakes uh, box and some sellotape but it works exactly the same way. The principle is identical and you'll see that in action. It's one of those things that is far far easier to show you than tell you. Oh, I'm going to stick it to it. We've got literally a cardboard frame. We'll cut it to size so that it is exactly, but hopefully we will wind up with a washboard that will be an absolutely perfect fit for the channels. But to do it, we have to install the aluminium channels first. So what, what are you doing, Ben? Um, making holes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you mean why am I oiling the holes in the drill bit? Yes. It's a top tip I guess that I've been given by a mechanic and uh, what he said is if you oil the holes in the drill bit it just means that the, drip, the bit if it bites in is less likely to stop and jerk and gouge bits out it's going to go around more smoothly just lubricates the cutting process and makes for a better hole. I've got no idea if it's true but you know what I'm willing to give it a go. The other uh, tip that I got off this particular mechanic was when you are going to drill into metal, tick a, tick a metal punch and punch the hole where you want the drill to go and make a dent so that when you, put your first, when you put your drill in it's got somewhere to sit in a little hollow so it won't wander all around the metal until it finally bites in and makes a hole because sometimes it happens to drill bits, they wander all over the place. But tick a metal punch, give it a good whack with a hammer, make a nice little hole, put a bit of oil on it, put your drill bit on top and away you go. Right, so what we've done is we've um, been over to our neighbour's boat and nicked the Amazon box that things get delivered in and we've cut strips out and triangles of cardboard and we have made a cardboard door. And this cardboard door fits exactly in our new tracks. It's a bit floppy dobby, it really takes two of us to get it in but you get the idea, it goes in sort of like so. It has a tendency to bend a little bit but there you go, it's in. So. We put the sides in, got them all lined up, then we joined the sides together with the tops and bottoms and we used some triangles to brace it. And this is gives us the sides and bottom of the door. So when we get the bits of wood that we want to cut, we will be using this as the template. We will get the bits of wood, put them together, lay this on top, go around it with a sharpie. That will give our outline, cut it with a saw, and when we drop it in here, it should be pretty darn close. Close enough at any rate. That's the plan. Yeah, so you just got to mark it off at the top now, haven't you? Yes, I'm just going to make a little mark here where the runners are. And I'm going to do that with a sharpie and that will mark the two top edges and then we'll just draw a line across. So what were you writing, Bev? Oh, no, no big mystery. This side faces forward, port, starboard. There's a lot of people out there that say, with some justification I might add, um, oh marine stuff, it's massively overpriced, it's massively overhyped and it's no better than what you can buy in the DIY store. Well, this is from the DIY store and although I don't normally do this, I'm going to name this store. It was B&Q. We've bought 9mm ply off them before, this is 9mm ply which we're using for the door project. 
and when I cut it, it turns out that the centre of the panel isn't the ply. The plies aren't actually glued together. They split all the way through. All those panels are split in the middle. It took us a while to find panels that didn't just split up the edges because all the ones in the store split up. But now that I've looked at this one, I just take it apart a bit. What's interesting is it's actually got double-sided sticky tape inside it, which is a new one. I didn't know they stuck plies together with double-sided sticky tape. I always had this funny idea that they actually used glue. So this is a home product, non-marine product, bought from a home store at not a particularly cheap price, I have to add, but cheaper than marine ply. I would not dispute that. And it is basically a piece of crap. And it's not often I swear on the channel either, but I am really, really irritated that I've gone to all the trouble of putting all this together and when I come and cut the one piece of wood, smack up the middle of it, is big voids where there's no glue. And frankly, I am a tad annoyed. So I'm going to look at these and decide even if the wood is rescuable. I do have glue, maybe I can glue it back together, I don't know. But my gut feeling says no. If there's if it's inadequately glued, it'll fall apart. And the really thing this is fit for, to be quite honest, is kindling. So how's it going, Beth? <laughs> measure twice, cut once doesn't work on this boat. <laughs> now that it's measure 14 times and cut once. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm giggling too much. <laughs> so where did the wood come from? Where did the what? Wood. <sighs> so where did the wood... So... <laughs> Where did the wood come from? One of our supporters locally around here, Trevor, bless him, he's helped us out so many times, he's wonderful, and he gave us the wood which I then promptly balls up by getting my measurements wrong. However, there's an old saying in the IT business that if you can't fix it, feature it. So what we're going to do is our new, our new uh, washboards is going to have a super special mid-panel feature, which will be... Not normally found on cheaper washboards. <laughs> right. <laughs> Shut up. God. Knock, knock. Who's there? Open it up. Open it up, who? Go on, just open it up. <laughs> well, it's not looking too bad, Bev. Yeah, it's looking rightly. Um, there's been a few cock-ups along the way, but, you know... Um, I'm not the world's finest DIYer or woodworker, but I've got it done. So how come the uh, cardboard template uh, didn't work? I think the cardboard template did work, but the problem was the piece of wood I was cutting up just fell to pieces because it had no glue in it. And then the cardboard template got rained on and just it, it went to mush. So after that, I was thrown back on my own bits and bobs and I went for this feature design with a central gap because I thought it looked aesthetically pleasing. It wasn't... <laughs> Sorry, I can't even I can't even film you saying such rubbish without giggling. Sorry. You know because um, it kind of pointed the surrealism of the underlying metaphor. So it was nothing to do with the fact that I got a measurement wrong. Yeah, but it's looking good to me. Yep, it's done. So. I might cover up my, my botch with something else, I don't know, but for now, I think I'm pretty much done because it's cold, it's wet, it's raining, it's windy. We're stuck here under weather again, and I think it's probably time to tidy up and get some dinner on the way. So what are you doing, Beverly? Oh, hopefully putting the final coat of varnish on our temporary uh, washboards. So, um, this is the wood that we were given by our uh, one of our supporters, Trevor. Thank you very much, Trevor. We really appreciate it. Um, I did my best. My, my, my woodwork standards are nowhere near as good as yours. But um, it will do the job very nicely. It's a lovely fit. And uh, we've got two coats of varnish on it already. We're hoping this will be the last coat. And... Um, It'll get us through the season. That's all we want these to do. At the end of the season, we will review how we feel about them and whether we need to make something a bit more permanent. But that's for later. This is for now.